more than one option in first line, more than three options in, 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 in second line, and there are also immunotherapy in, in, in the, the profile of drugs that you can use, but how do you define the treatment plan for your therapies? So here I present different scenarios, patient A, B, C, D, and E. In the first place, we have patients who is candidate for all first-line treatments. So here we need to decide what is the best for our patient. In the second case, the patient presents contraindication, so that is aware due to, for example, uh, comorbidities related to immune, immune disease or patient with high risk to twice a bleeding. In the third scenario, patient C, we have patient who is only candidate for coagulant because present, for example, autoimmune disease and the tumor burden is more than 50% of the liver. In this case, it's easy because we, only, we have only one option. The last two cases are contraindications for all the treatments, but again, they are not the same. In the first uh, patient, patient B, the patient present a uh, decompensating disease with deterioration of personal status. In this case, there are not options for them. However, in the last patient, patient E, the personal status is zero, good type of score, but present severe vasculitis. So in this case, we need to identify if it, a, some option could be useful for this patient. But again, it is not the study we will have in the clinical trials. So for the first two questions, what is the best option for those patients who have more than one option that improve overall survival? The answer is not easy because after coagulant treatment, we have many options. However, we know that a case of death is better than coagulant in first line, and we don't have second or third line in this situation. The same happened with lombatinib, equal to coagulant. However, there are not options I use for randomized trials and second or third line. So in this case, we need to uh, have a decision. The decision could be completely different uh, according to our um, study. And for this reason, in this review that we did in here in, in the BCAC, we try to summarize the different options that we could have and the different factors that the doctors may use to uh, have this decision. So if we consider factors for the selecting treatment, we could say, okay, if you have two drugs, three drugs that improve our survival, my uh, third option is that I have better survival, better, sorry, better uh, safety profile. Unfortunately, the trials they will not compare safety profile from one to the other. Okay, I can follow the rationale if it is a second or third line, or I can use the stones, or those who have real world data, or improve in quality of life. Again, I, I would say I can. Talk, uh, talk about that at the end of the talk. There are no trials to compare quality of life between one drug to the other. So the spectrum is very, very heterogeneous. This is the priority, decision one, decision six, and all of the decisions that we want to add. The decision of adding one mm, plan to the other is depend on their criteria. The criteria could be exponential. We can mix or order the factors according to our expectation. But our recommendation is try to have your profile of priorities and then you can apply that for all of these patients. At the very end, the treatment will be uh, used according to the patient profile and the local availability of the drug. We need to discuss with the patient the, the options, but at the very end, the patient will decide what is the best treatment for them but again, the patient decide based on information that we give for them in our, uh, our patient group. So this is like try to summarize the complexity of the decision and we need to have our algorithm to apply to our patients. So the, the last point that I would like to uh, mention is the patient report uh, outcomes. Now it is very useful information for uh, giving to the patients. However, the information that we have is according to the, this questionnaire of quality of life. But the most important thing, the information from that is a post hoc analysis of suitable population who answer the questionnaire. 
shall not apply for all cases included in the file. And the second important point, analysis of PAO endpoints were not assessed for multi-signature. So these results are considered only descriptive information that is not possible to compare one signal to the other, regardless of the result that we have in the last publication of the uh, in-rail trial and the PCR trial. So it's important to explain the case in the different profiles, but we cannot use it for comparison. So, to summarize the systemic therapy, the BCLC approach for second and following lines, here is our uh, summary. First, if you look at first line racemic, we could have second line treatment with Revo, Ramu, or Tauzantinib according to the profile patients, and for those who receive Revo or Ramu, we could use Tauzantinib in third line. After that, they are not evidence based treatment for patients in the other uh, scenarios. So if you look uh, at the SEDER, LEMBA, mobilization, or clinical trials in third line, there were not evidence-based treatment for the second and following line. So how do you manage the patients in that situation? In addition, we have treatment that were approved for other lines, and here in green, you have all the drugs that's improved over a survival, regardless of the line. And then you have other two options. Drug immobilization were not approved in certain based on survival and immunotherapy, again, approved based on risk point. So our proposal is, if you, are, if you don't have evidence-based treatment, the third option is try to include the patient in a clinical trial to evaluate the different options. If the patient doesn't meet the criteria, or if you are in a place that we're not able to refer the patient to any hospital with clinical trials, the next uh, proposal is consider that drug that you have safety profile and also you have a rationality for the metamidosis action. However, if the patient develops the fluoration or they are not tolerant for this option, we could consider other options. Again, if you have a patient in this situation, this first line treatment, the third option is clinical trial as a second line treatment. But if the patient doesn't meet that criteria, we can, we can use the drug that we are av available to in our uh, center, but only those who have safety profile um, information. But again, if the patient develops duration or intolerance for these uh, drugs, the next step is consider again the option of clinical trials instead of new drugs that were not approved or they are not safe to provide in this specific scenario. But the most important thing in all of these scenarios, the patient should have a PC with a function and pertinent status. So, to summarize my, my talk, the next version of the BCC status system would include all these options for systemic therapy, also refine the patient with intermediate APC because some of them will receive, or the recommendation will be to receive a uh, systemic therapy as a first line option. But the most important thing is we finally share the new version of the BCC status system in November 22 in a three-week state in again because in November we celebrate our 75th anniversary and I want to invite all of you to be part of this uh, academic party that would be very for all the people. So thank you again for the invitation. I hope to meet you soon and again thank you uh, for the this meeting where I'm uh, now yes. working as a head of this um, project. Thank you very much for the invitation and see you soon. Thank you very much, Professor Maria. How are you? Uh, excellent presentation as, as, as usual. Uh, Professor Maria is a dear friend. We had a lot of scientific collaboration, as, uh, as you know, and we would like to, to see you physically very soon in Cairo. Uh, my, oh. first <laughs> yes. uh, my first question is, I believe that the, 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 the guidelines is moving fast, uh, changing very dynamically. And uh, for example, the intermediate stage we see uh, uh, the, there will be a big change in the treatment of the intermediate stage uh, of BCLC B. This is my first question. My second question is uh, how can we, cho we, we choose 
the third line of treatment, I think uh, it should be standardized. Uh, first line is okay, the second line of treatment is okay. However, the third line of treatment uh, should be standardized, in a way, it should be uh, standardized. Uh, uh, that's it. And uh, I think, I believe that the, combi the com combined therapy, the immune combined therapy with other modalities may be uh, a, a future uh, for the treatment of HCC in, in the near future. Yes, thank you very much again for the invitation. It was very nice to be in, in Cairo, like at least uh, virtually. Uh, regarding the, the third question of the patient with, the, uh, with uh, intermediate ATC, as I mentioned in the presentation, we are working in the new version of the BCC, and maybe we are happy to see this one. Uh, I give you some uh, news, but I, I have not given the, the last word because we are working on that. The only thing that I can say is some patients that present diffuse ATC or patient who exceed the criteria for the case because it's not technically possible, we could consider a systemic therapy as first line. So I agree with you and all the community that the heterogeneity of BCCB is a reality and we are working to, to define uh, this population properly. The second question related to second line and third line, I believe that for a test of breath, that now is the standard of care, they are not a standard second line treatment. Because in, in that population as well in patients treated with lambatomy, we do not have a randomized trial to demonstrate that one option is better than the other. And using sorafenib or lembatinib as de facto second line treatment could be uh, something that we need to, to know through uh, at least real world data, and these days we don't have this information. The option of third line treatment, the only one that will have uh, evidence based frequency is cabosantinib, but as I show in my last slide, uh, the complexity is, is very, very high, and our proposal is identify what is the priority for our uh, knowledge or our structure. Here in the BCC, oral survival is the best uh, option. If you have two options that are equal in oral survival, the second one is safe to provide. But there are other doctors that have other uh, algorithms, and it is not consensus, and I believe that we need to work on that in this collaborative cohort that we have and that we are working together for other areas. Thank you very much. Be any other questions? Uh, thanks, uh, Professor Maria. Uh, I, I wanted to ask you about your center, actually, about the use of BIT-CT for the evaluation and follow-up of uh, different modality. And uh, as we know about the ongoing clinical trial, about the use of systemic therapy in early stage and in the intermediate stage. So what about in your uh, center to evaluate these patients? Yes. Uh, I believe that for uh, patient in adjuvant setting, so after uh, treatment of radiofrequency frequency resection or case, at this day we do not have evidence to use this drug. So we only use uh, immunotherapy or other drugs as in this setting under clinical trials. We don't use these uh, agents in clinical practice because we believe that we need to have the safety for that drug and also the efficacy, because we need to keep in mind that the population that we can offer this kind of treatment are patients under complete response, and we don't we need to avoid some safety issues in the population. Well, this is our point of view. So thanks, uh, Professor uh, Marie. I have a, a l final two questions. Yeah. The first is, uh, what's your personal rationale in, in treating the child, C, child B7 patients? Especially, the, uh, they are not touching the Imprev 150 with the Atizupev and in the REFLECT trial with Levantinib. And the second question, what's your um, opinion for the adoption of some uh, um, scores for the prediction in the intermediate stage for the taste, like the ALPI score, uh, specifically the ART score for the retasting, and the HAP and state score. Okay, uh, this is a very good question because it's one of the discussions for the new version of the BCC. So you are asking me some some areas that we are working on. 
uh, for, for those patients who, I start with the, the last uh, part of the question, the score for defining the patients for uh, IV score and so on, at least at these days, we do not have a specific cutoff to define what is the best option for each of them. Basically, because all the patients with decompensatiosis are IV score uh, two or three. And the majority of the cohort only include IV-1 and a few patients with IV-2. So if this is an area that we are still uh, working on. For patients with childhood B7 point, and uh, considering a case of birth, I believe that we do not have evidence-based and we don't have also real world data. So if you are very lucky to have the, the option to treat patients with a test of birth outside the criteria of the invade, that is not the case here in, in Spain. I suggest uh, evaluate all of them in a prospective cohort study from different centers. Because at this day, at least here in Spain, if the patient accepts the criteria of invade, we study them for uh, TTIs because we have real world data to support the use in that population. But for sure, it's an area for, for working together. Last question before moving to the next speaker. They're all of immune therapy and non-viral patients, like in NASH. Do they work or? <laughs> this is the. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 because uh, you know I, that NASH is becoming uh, a risk factor now. Yes, I'm smiling because it's a hot topic due to the paper from animals. I believe that the data that we have is a hypothesis generation for animals models. We do not have data in humans to use uh, the etiology for deciding the treatment. And the meta-analysis that was done used retrospective studies for uh, patients that were not stratified according to the etiology. So uh, in summary, I believe that it's very early to define based on, on muscle data. Thank you, Professor Hayes. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. See you next. Bye. bye bye. So it's my honor and my pleasure to 